Good morning, Living Waters. Good morning. We use the old trick. The Lord be with you. <laughs> so with you. That works old every trick. time. Okay. <laughs> so one of my one of my favorite phrases that I like to say. We're doing something a little different this morning. Okay. So, have you ever been to worship and wondered why do we say the creed together every single week? Or perhaps this, this whole church thing is, is newer to you and you've never been told why we, we sit and stand and sit and stand over and over again. What is this, 1500s calisthenics? What's going on here? Or maybe you have questions about worship that are even more far out there than that. Well, my friends, today is for you because together with the worship team, we have kicked, cooked up uh, a sermon today that will be split into four parts throughout our worship. Uh, with one clear objective. Yes, a sermon with one clear objective. It's a miracle. Anyway, uh, why do we do what we do in worship? And before each of the sections today of worship, we're going to go through why we do them. And then having learned that, we'll do them together. So consider this an intro to worship, if you will. The hope is that there will be a greater understanding and appreciation for the type of worship that we offer here at Living Waters. And don't worry, if you have burning worship questions that did not get addressed in worship today, which I don't, if I don't cover it in those four parts, we will have a Q&A right after worship. I will skip my post-worship duties for later. We'll jump right into it after the handshake line. So uh, that, you can, you can try to stump the pastor if you want, bring it on, okay? Uh, that way... We can answer any questions you have. And then we will also, after that, have a brief worship training. If in learning this, you're saying, you know, I would like to read, or I'd like to run media, or whatever. Uh, we, this is your trans- chance to learn. Where we can have a, a, a brief training, because all these roles in worship are, are quick to learn. So uh, I hope you consider that during our worship today. So to start, worship itself is a communal act. The fancy church word for the order of worship that we and most of the church around the world use through the ages is called liturgy, meaning, from the Greek, of course, the work of the people. See, worship here is not the work of the pastors. It's not just the work of the music director and the band. It's all of us worshiping together our amazing and almighty God. This is why we seek to get as many people involved in worship as possible. In fact, traditionally, we usually have an assisting minister up here doing parts of worship. We can train you today if you'd like to do that, by the way. I would love to get more of you up here. This is also why in worship we have a lot of calls and responses, standing and sitting, active participation in the life of worship. It's not a lecture, but a conversation. It's why we have readers and communion assistants, candle lighters, all different kinds of people contributing in various ways. This is our collective worship of God together as a community. As much as we have this this set order, uh, if a group of us have an idea for a change for worship, let's give it a try. This is our community's expression of our faith. This is our community's understanding of how we, we talk to God in worship. Which brings me to this first section of the four in worship that we are about to begin together called the gathering section. We, hear, we heard in the community series that God is a, a gatherer of people. Well, in worship, that's literally true. We gather, and even from streaming from home, we gather from all over because God has brought us here. God wants us here in this place. God wants us to be part of this community. God has acted in our lives. Therefore, we gather for worship. And so we start with, with music in a moment. Not, not just a wake-up call, but that, that kind of helps too. But as an act of praise. Thank you, God, for bringing us here. Thank you, God, for all the ways you've acted in our lives and throughout the generations of the faithful. Remind us of your good word today, God. We Lutherans are, are adamant, adamant that music is a gift from God. Sometimes we gather for worship, bringing things that we just can't yet put into words. But through art, through singing, through music, we can express those pieces and concerns of our soul to God. 
And in that spirit of, of changing worship as an expression of our faith community, we, we've put the sharing of the peace at the beginning here at Living Waters because we felt in these modern times where seemingly everything can, can be divisive, we wanted a reminder that right away, as we gather, we gather with a different understanding. We gather in a community that is inclusive, that has been united by the actions of Jesus Christ. And we want to be clear, we gather in peace for the worship of God alone. Then we have announcements, because as the old saying goes, has something really been announced if we've not shared it four different times? Plus, again, this part of worshiping, the gathering, it, the announcements is often invitations of different ways to gather, of other opportunities for us to gather as the body of Christ outside of worship. So yes, even announcements have a theological understanding in worship, for we gather for the sake of the gospel. And finally, in this, this first section, we have the communal confession and forgiveness. Remember, Lutheranism was born out of the Protestant Reformation starting in 1517. A tradition of, of, uh, traditional practice of Roman Catholic is, Catholicism is individual confession with a priest as, a, as an intercessor. But here we, we, don't, we don't have a, a confessional booth. Here we, we gather and we, with the acknowledgement that none of us are perfect. That we've all made mistakes this past week, known and, and unknown to us. We're all in the same boat. We all need that grace of Christ and we are in this together. This is why we confess together at the beginning of worship. It's why I, I do my little spin around to show, yeah, I got sins to confess too. Uh, the Packers lost on Thursday. I have sins to confess, okay? Uh, or Friday. Uh, so I join you confessing before God. I'm in the same boat as you. We gather for worship right away of the acknowledgement of, yes, God, we need you. And right away we hear those words of forgiveness. We are reminded of the power of God's grace. We are retold of God's promises in Scripture to forgive us, renew us, and lead us. God's grace is at the core of our gathering for worship. And so I invite you to please rise and body your spirit as we begin worship with our opening song.
Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of that peace. 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 I invite you to please be seated. And if you have an announcement to make, please make your way forward, which some of you have. So, Andrea, you want to go first? Okay, I'm back. I, I have some really good news. Everybody likes good news, yes? yes? So my son, who has been underemployed for quite a while, has a job. And it's Ooh. going well. Why do I say this? Because 27 years ago today, I had my last child, and this is said child. Yay. But I have a little sign, help wanted. We all like to be gainfully employed, as is my son now. <laughs> but how glorious is it when you and I can give our time of our free will for good stuff? just because God calls us to do good stuff in the world. And yes, I'm back for trunk or treat. <laughs> so I am again looking for a few good trunks. <laughs> so if you're like me and don't have littles anymore, it's okay. Please come, please open your trunk. Please buy some candy. It's a good excuse to put on a costume if you want not required but please come that day open your trunks if you can't make it that day I have a donation bin for candy back there um, and a sign-up sheet for things we've got Michelle doing arts already we've got Rachel I saw her heading up refreshments we've got property guys on the hay wagon and stuff so please come October 26th from two to five, we're gonna set up ahead and clean up after, thank you. Very good, thank you. Amy? So my announcement may not be as wonderful as hers, but I think it's pretty special. Uh, Mary Ann and I are planning to start Chosen season two again. So if you were part of that last year, in two weeks, starting September 25th from seven to 8.30, we're going to all meet together in here and watch season two, The Chosen. Um, it's usually about 45 minutes, sound right, Marianne? 45 minutes, and then we'll break into small groups to do a short discussion afterwards. Yes, Jenny? Absolutely, great question. And you can just pop in and out. So if something's going on and you need to miss, say, Wednesday, you may come in because they usually do a little recap at the beginning, but each one can be a standalone. So if you're unfamiliar with The Chosen, it's all about the life 
of Christ from the viewpoint of the disciples and apostles and people he comes into contact with. So it's a great series from a different perspective than we tend to think about it. And um, last year we had probably about 15 people show up on a regular basis, so a great little conversation after each showing. So be aware, there is a sign up over by the coffee maker, and then Carol will be sh sharing one also um, through the emails, okay? My second big announcement is, just in case anyone might be interested in participating in the worship team's next meeting, it will be next Sunday after service. So as a quick reminder, today we have a training session after service, and then the worship team meeting will be next Sunday after service. Thank you. Thank you. Let's work our way down, Mark. Good morning. Good morning. For those that don't know me, I'm Mark. I'm part of the property team, and our motto on the property team is uh, we don't meet, we do. But um, <laughs> that's not true. We're actually meeting tomorrow, so that's why I'm calling. <laughs> So tomorrow, if you're available, 8.30 in the morning, we're going to meet here. We're going to talk about some of the items that are coming up. Uh, we're really busy with trunk or treat. Um, we're going to be setting up the uh, figures outside. Uh, we have a lot of tree cutting to do like we do every year. I know Michelle's ready. Um, that'll happen probably in November, but October, we're going to be doing a lot of trunk, uh, truck, trunk, trunks, yeah, tree, trunk. tree trunks. We're going to chop all those down and, and grind them. So... A lot going on with the property team. If you're available, to, please uh, stop by uh, tomorrow at 8.30. Very good. By the way, what is going on? Sermon, beginning of church? Yeah. I, I kind of like it because that kind of motivates up. us to come yeah. in and we got three early. parts to go, so. To be on time. To be on time. <laughs> We're gathering tomorrow. Huh. There you go. Very good. Thank you, Mark. Marianne? Good morning. Those of you who don't know me, I'm Marianne. Uh, very excited about season two of The Chosen. That's going to be very exciting. Um, looking forward to that. Um, we are also doing college care kits again this fall. So if you have a college student that uh, would like a college care kit, we're going to be doing those October 13th. We're going to be putting those together right after service. It should take 15, 20 minutes out in the narthex. Uh, but if you have a college student, there's going to be a Google form going out, and you can fill that out with their name and address, uh, and those will be going out mid-October. So uh, very exciting. We had about 24 last year co college care kits go out. So uh, if you have somebody or know somebody, please, uh, we'd love to have them. Very good. Thank you. Marianne. Tracy? Um. I just wanted to say thank you. Um, I don't know if many of you know, but um, I've had struggles with my mom and dad. Um, my mom is with us this afternoon. And I know a lot of people have sent cards to her. Um, my dad suffered a brain injury in, in an accident. So I just wanted to th say thank you to all the cards and the thought prayer, thoughts and prayers that have gone out for our family. Um, also, uh, fellowship, uh, we have a hike not this Saturday, but next. I believe that's the 21st at noon. We're going to have a picnic lunch, I, and then we'll go for a little hike. So you can hike as long as you want or as short as you want. Um, there is a QR code up on the fellowship board, but I also have a sign-up if you'd prefer just to do it that way, too. Um, and I think that, that, that's it. Oh, and then one other thing. Um, we are going to be taking volunteers to do the membership board from now on. I have my volunteers for September. It's a little late, but um, sending emails wasn't really working. So when I come up here to make announcement, I might ask for a volunteer if anyone would be willing to do it. That way I can, and it's really quick. It's only a few questions you have to answer, and you send me pictures, and I do all the rest. So just FYI. All right. Thank you, Thank you Tracy, and happy... Hey, Tracy's mom, thanks for joining us for worship. <laughs> Happy that you're here. Um, confirmation starts this Wednesday. This is the info meeting to go over the year, answer any questions. Uh, if we would really like if a parent, guardian, grandparent can be there, um, because often schedules don't always get relayed from student to guardian, so we want to make sure that they're there too, so we're all on the same page. Um, and we have more questions that way too. That'll be at 7 on Wednesday, uh, probably 7 to 8, a little shorter than normal. Eight, I don't think we'll go to 8.30. Um, 
and then Sunday school and adult Bible study started today. So feel free to jump into those. We have a great plan for adult Bible study uh, rotating, which is uh, teachers, which sounds fantastic. And Sunday school is on a roll. We're looking for Sunday school teachers uh, if you're able to help. Any other announcements this morning? Okay, please rise and body your spirit as we continue with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let's confess our sin and come to God for healing together. Gracious God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. We confess we that we have honored you with our lips, and we have wronged our neighbors with our tongues. The cravings at war within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins. Draw near to us in the time of need, and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Gracious God, throughout the ages, you transform sickness into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence and make us a people ready to proclaim your promises to the whole world. Through Jesus Christ, our healer and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
So with worship, sometimes you'll notice some items are the same every week and some change. For instance, you always notice we have communion, the Lord's Prayer, and the creeds. Those are always the same. But the prayer of the day that we just had, it changes every single week. It's written to reflect the message of the readings that we have appointed for the day. Thus, we begin the second section of worship called Word. This section, as you may have guessed, is where we hear God's Word, the Bible. Our readings are usually three. We cut one today because... Well, I can go on for a little while. Anyway, we usually have an Old Testament reading, a New Testament reading, it's not the Gospels, hello Paul, and a Gospel reading. But this can change on some Sundays if we wish. Sometimes we, we do a psalm saying or focus just on the Gospels. Pastors are, are called as ministers of word and sacrament. In non-churchy speak, that means that I preach the, the Bible and I preside over baptism and communion. So note, it's not a coincidence that when we have baptisms in worship, they are found in between the word section and the meal section, the word and sacrament, which is the core of our worship. But pastors are not the only one who have access to God's word. Again, remember, Luther and the Reformers translated the Bible into German and other commonly spoken languages. We want everyone to read Scripture. It's why we study Scripture outside of worship as well. And in Scripture, we want everyone to hear God's Word in a language that they understand. Scripture is the foundation of our faith, our life, and our hope in Christ. As, fa as Luther famously quipped, the church is not a penthouse, but a mouth house. We're not trying to enforce certain rules uh, with Scripture as our backing. Rather, this is our collective understanding of the Scriptures. We want you to ask questions. We want you to go to Bible study and to Sunday school. We want you to participate in those beloved interactive sermons that we have from time to time. The church is at its best when it is a place where the Word of God is spoken, heard, but also discussed, meditated on, and prayed with rather than a place to just simply read about God or to receive information about God. The Word is alive. The Word is more. We believe that faith is created, nurtured, and sustained through the hearing of God's Word, and that what people believe is defined not only by what they listen to, but also what they talk about. When I gather with church leaders of other denominations, we in the ELCA have a, a reputation uh, well, we love coffee and donuts, but we also have another reputation of deeply studying Scripture. We dig up the context of the passage. We ask the difficult questions of life, faith, and the Bible. We have intentional conversations together about how this thousands of year old collection of, of documents written in multiple dead languages from halfway across the world is still relevant to our lives today. If I have done my job, the sermon is a conversation starter, equipping you to wrestle with the text as you go about your lives the following week. Nothing, well, most, nothing makes me happier. We'll still go ahead. Nothing makes me happier when I have heard that you have talked about the sermon in the car on the ride home, or the gospel passage popped into your head on a Wednesday when you were at work, or it came up at your, your family's nighttime prayers. The word is not static. It is a part of our entire life. The worship is that springboard for how we are connected with God and God's word our entire life long. The word section of worship should help make God's word more accessible to us. And it should make God's presence in our lives feel more real to us, more tangible. It should be relatable and to the point where we see God working in the world. This is why after an incredible sermon each week, we immediately have music as another way for God's word to be proclaimed to us. If you notice, CT is quite intentional in matching the sermon song up with the appointed text. Again, we want that message to be heard. It's also why we confess one of the three creeds of the church united together in the same section, because we have heard God's word, and each week we want to reestablish what it is that we believe in response to that word. Maybe uh, not the Nicene Creed, and definitely not the multi-page Athanasian Creed. I've not broken that out yet. But the Apostles' Creed is, is that short 90-second elevator pitch. It's the quick answer if someone were to ask you, what do you believe? We say it each week hoping it's sinking into our hearts, 
It's being remembered in our minds. And we say it together because we are united in those beliefs as living waters, but also as the church united. And finally, we, we join in this section of the word of praying for the whole church and the whole world in the prayers of the people. Again, notice people. We join our voices together for something even greater than that which we can see. In fact, those prayers are, are prayed at all ELCA churches every week. We are literally united in prayer with millions and millions of people. Prayer is the heart of our conversation with God. Thus, we have that, you know that section out loud in our silence of our hearts or at home in the common sections? This is your moment. This is your moment to add to the conversation of our people of God gathered with what we want to talk about with God. I remember at my, my home church, before I was a pastor in, in Memphis, Tennessee, there was an older gentleman who every single week during that section of the prayers, he was not silent in his heart. Every week, in a loud, gravelly voice, he would say, we pray for our active military. Every single week. But you know what? When later we had young people from the congregation go serve in the military, the parents knew each week, no matter what the prayers were with the ELCA, their kids were prayed for by this community of faith. And when they knew, they also had someone to talk to after worship who would pray with them. God loves our expressive worship when all are fully present. And the word is our guidance and reminder of this fact. We continue with the first reading. Good morning. Our first reading is Psalm 146, and you can find this reading on page 507 in the Bible under the chair. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Please rise and body your spirit for the reading of the gospel. Holy Gospel according to Mark, the seventh chapter. This is Mark 7, 24 through 37. You can find this reading on page 819 in the Bible in front of you if you'd like to follow along. It's Mark 7, 24 through 37. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed at his, down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician origin, she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And Jesus said to her, For saying that you may go, the demon has left your daughter. So she went home and found the child laying on the bed, and the demon was gone. Then Jesus returned from the region of Tyre, 
and went by the way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hands on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers in his ears and spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, which means be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus ordered them not to tell anyone. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated and invite the kids up for the children's message this morning. made it yeah well good morning so this morning in worship we're talking about why we do what we do in worship so why do you think we have a, a children's message this morning yeah what do you think very good high five <laughs> that was perfect yes so uh yeah <laughs> We're done. No. Um, yeah. I w- the only thing I would add is it does help kids understand the, the gospel message, and we, you know, usually have things in the back. It also helps some adults too, if we're being honest. Okay. Um, but yeah, this is this is your space, right? Uh, we like to ask questions here. Sometimes we we talk about different things, but the idea is that we want this this word, God's bi- the Bible, uh, God's will for your life to be heard. We want them to hear it all too, but we really want you to hear it as well, in a, in a different way, the way that hopefully it's fun and, and you can understand and, and what Josephine just said, basically. So, all right. Uh, will you pray with me this morning? I'm going to have the congregation repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God we, thank you. we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Son, Jesus Christ. Please, help Please help us to understand, to understand your, word your word and to worship. And to worship. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thanks for coming up. Thank you. 
is rise in body or spirit. And join me in confessing our faith of the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe the Holy Spirit, the Holy Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all that are in need. Awaken in our communities of faith a spirit of radical hospitality. Encourage our churches to celebrate and embrace people of diverse backgrounds, experiences, and abilities. Deepen our commitment to ecumenical and interreligious partnerships. Hear us, O oh God. Bring forth water to nourish plants and animals in places suffering from drought. Renew our commitments to protect rivers, lakes, and streams. And make us good stewards of water in our home and communities. Preserve wetland habitats and creatures that make their homes there. Hear us, O God. Inspire leaders of cities, nations, and tribes to lead with wisdom and humility. Bring peace among peoples in conflict. And strengthen global commitments to nonviolent solutions. Guide all, guide all who seek refuge from war to a safe haven. Hear us, O God. Comfort all who live with chronic illness. Surround them in your tender embrace and sustain all who provide ongoing care and support. Bring hope and healing to people struggling with addiction and nourish the spirits of all who are in recovery. This time, oh, this time we lift up prayers of thanksgiving for Ace and Sandy's birthdays. Encouragement for Fred, Mike, Jim, Mandy, Eric, Mary, and healing for Lou. Encouragement for Sherry and healing for Ken. Encouragement for Christine's final interview and all students and teachers. Encouragement for safety for Kristen and Elna. God knows. Uh, healing for Diane. Thanksgiving for Pastor Stephanie, CT, Chris, Kermit, Praise Band, and Gretchen. Encouragement for Chuck, Kevin, Heidi, Diane, Ed, Jeannie, uh, John. Healing for James and someone who know the grace of Christ, Lynn and Val. And all those who name aloud in the silence of our hearts or at home in the comments section. Hear us, O oh God. Nurture in all people the gift of your creating spirit. Inspire artists and musicians, woodworkers and quilters, poets and dancers. Revive those whose artistic wells have run dry and live in all who doubt their creative talents. Hear us, O oh God. Receive our prayer. We give you thanks for all who have died and now find in rest, their rest in you. May their faithful witness guide us to daily life with you. Hear us, O oh God. Receive our prayer. We entrust these and all our prayers to you, holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Don't worry, the final two sections are much shorter than the first two. It's tough, though. I, intro to worship is a whole class in seminary, okay? There's a lot to talk about. But, if, if you, again, if you do have questions we do not cover today, please stick around and ask them. So, we heard a lot about communion in August's infamous Bread of Life month. Uh, but today, I want to frame this part of worship with one word. Eucharist. What is Eucharist? You know, you, you know I had to get this in here at some point. It's from the Greek, Eucharisto, or Eucharisteo. Uh, to break it down, you is the prefix to, to offer up or to give. Charis is, means grace or to give thanks, and Teo means Theo, uh, God. 
So thus together, Eucharist in English means the giving thanks or offering up grace to God. This is what this part of worship, the meal, is. Through the body and blood of Jesus Christ, God has offered up grace for us all. Communion is an outward sign of that grace. And for this grace, we give up thanks, a thanksgiving, if you will. You may remember for, for years out of COVID, we, we moved the, the offering um, after we had communion. The, the feeling that we wanted to convey is that God gives to us first in word and sacrament, and then we gratefully respond. But recently, as good Lutherans, we, we talked about it again, and we wanted an offering to have more of an intentionality, to stand out more, and we returned it to its original spot before the communion part of the liturgy. Uh, but there was another reason, too. It was brought up, well, when I go out to eat, I pay for the bill after I eat. And so having communion and then having offering, we, we didn't want us to feel that we were having a bill for communion. Grace is freely given at God's table. All are welcome, and it is a free gift of God through Jesus Christ. So now that we, we start this section with our offering to respond to God's word that we just heard, and then we receive the meal that God freely gives to all, all are welcome at the Lord's table. It is not our meal. It's not mine. I just preside. Uh, but make no mistake, this is God's meal for all. Thus, we have the, these call and responses in that uh, prayer of thanksgiving for the uh, communion. We also have the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Again, that we are all actively involved around the table. And uh, we have this whole section of worship that is highlighting our relationship with God through the prayers through the gifts of grace. God is all of grace, is, is all grace, love, and mercy. God is generous and, and freely gives to all. We do not earn this sacred meal, but it is given to us. God is fully present in this meal and in our lives. God teaches us to pray, to live, and here God even feeds us for what it is that we need in the week ahead. And so with that, we will continue with the offering.
pray. Blessed are you, O God, the source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on, his, on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together in whichever language we prefer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus welcomes you to this table. Come, here is your God. All are welcome. Oh, 
one day the stone rolled away from the door and he arose over death he had conquered now is ascended the Lord evermore death could not hold him the grave could not keep him rising again My bad. <clears throat> this brings us to the last section of worship, ascending. Uh, worship is not just a Sunday morning act. It is a springboard for living out our faith Monday through Sunday. Verse, well, yeah, Sunday. It is part of why we often have some sort of service project or conversation or activity right after worship. Because we are sent out in the world to do good. Sent out to serve the gospel that we just heard sent out, fed, and nourished by a meal we just received. You'll notice this section is, section is anchored not by reciting the to-do list of everything we must do this week. It is not anchored by an individual mandate. No, the foundation for this section is a blessing. Every week we have a blessing in the name of God that this week, no matter where you go or what you do, God will be active with you in these expressed ways. Honestly, the, the blessing is one of my favorite parts of worship. Up there with communion, that hearing of our relationship with God over and over, the body of Christ given for you, the body of Christ given for you. And the, and the blessing ties into that. I deeply cherish to be able to be the messenger of God's grace for you in this week ahead in the blessing. Here in worship, you are, are brought into community, which is very, very important. And it is good for us. We hear God's word, helping us to grow as people of faith. We are fed and forgiven, nourished by God's grace, and we are sent out with God's blessing. Worship is a reminder that even Monday through Saturday, you are never alone. You have a God, and you have a community of believers that are always with you. And please notice this, this final dismissal, it changes now and then the line that I say, but your response is always the same. Anyone know it? Thanks be to God! You see, even though we are gathered to worship God, to praise God, to give God thanks, God can't help but give to us as well. God is with you in the word you heard this week. God is, is with you when that song from Sunday pops in your head on a Thursday. God is with you when you get a text from someone in this community checking in on you or when you send one to another. Worship is a weekly reminder of what is true, that God is good God is generous. God is filled with grace and mercy, not just on Sunday, but all of the time. All of the time, God is good. And so, I invite you to rise in body or spirit.
And as you are sent out into the world, receive this blessing. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you, keep you, and give you peace. You gave your life to make a difference. You gave your life to make a change. You welcomed all to your table. You're calling us to do the same. I want Won't my life, life to make, make a difference. difference. I want, I want my life. To make a change, I want my life to do some good. Yeah. I want my life to make a change. Working side by side, no water inside. Together we can make that change. I want my life to do some good here. I want my life to make a change. Cause in the great divide, joy and peace will abide. Together we can make that change. Jesus is our peace. All of fighting is Together we can I want my life to do some good here. I want my life to make a change. We're the citizens with the saints. We're the sunshine with the rain. We're the joy with the pain. We're the change. You hear the sick and the poor. Love the prophet and the whore. You will do more. You will change. I want my life to make a difference. I want my life to make a change. I want my life to do some good here. I want my life to make a change. I want my life to make a difference. I want my life to make a change. I want my life to do some good here. I want my life to make a change. Very good. So right after worship, we will have the, the Q&A. Uh, go in peace. Follow Jesus. Thanks be to God.